The word of the Lord that we consider together today is that gospel reading from Luke chapter 4. If you wish to have those scripture verses before you, they're found on the inside of today's bulletin on the right-hand page. How well do you do when it comes to temptation? I'm not talking about how often you order a salad instead of french fries or are able to pass up a big piece of chocolate cake. Rather, I'm talking about the way the Bible uses the word temptation. It means being put to the test by someone who's trying to make you fail. That's the way that Satan tempts. His temptations are never harmless. They're always designed to destroy. For good reason, the Bible describes the tempter like this. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Too often we have ended up the victims of that roaring lion. We weren't going to give in again. We were going to be strong and do what was right, but then our own strength, was not enough. And we found ourselves having to say, why did I do that again? We've lost those battles with temptation more times than we can remember or count. And that puts us in a place of guilt, a place where we are unworthy to be called a child of God, a place where we deserve eternal separation from God. God in mercy sent one to fight Satan and temptation for us. And that is why we see the Lord Jesus in that deserted place in Palestine being tempted by the devil for 40 days. This, of course, was not the first time the devil had tempted Jesus. For example, in childhood, he had tempted Jesus the same way he tempts us, tempted him to disobey his mother and stepfather, tempted him to retaliate when other kids were mean, tempted him to skip worship. But Jesus had not sinned, not even once. And now, for 40 days, Satan is intensely tempting Jesus with temptations specifically designed to turn him aside from his saving mission. Over and over again, Satan tried to get Jesus to forget about his God-appointed task and think about himself instead. Now, even though Jesus was true God, these temptations were real because he was also truly human. How weak and hungry would you feel if you had not eaten for 40 days? Well, that's how Jesus felt after going without food for these 40 days while Satan is tempting him. And so Satan makes the offer, Jesus, if you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Now, it would not have been wrong for Jesus to do a miracle like that. But listen to what the devil was suggesting. Jesus, look at you. Lonely and hungry. What kind of life is this for the Son of God? if that's really who you are. Doesn't your heavenly Father care for you? Follow my suggestion and your life will be better. The devil designed that temptation to try to get him to doubt the goodness of God the Father. That's the same way Satan first tempted Adam and Eve. He suggested that God was keeping something good away from them by forbidding them to eat of that one tree their lives would be better, more fulfilled, he promised, if they just ate from that tree. And besides, it was such a little thing, it couldn't really cause any harm, could it? With one bite, they experienced Satan's lies. And they traded a perfect life of peace with God for guilt and shame and fear and death. Does the devil sometimes tempt you to doubt the goodness of God? 
in times of need or sadness or difficulty, doesn't he say, if you are a child of God, why doesn't God keep these kind of things away from you? Or he might say, are you going to keep on believing in God? Look at the people who don't believe in him. Their lives are just as good, sometimes even better than yours. Well, Jesus responded to that temptation by saying, It is written, man shall not live on bread alone. Jesus didn't need Satan's suggestions. He trusted that his heavenly father would provide everything that he needed. But notice how Jesus disarmed this temptation. He didn't use his mighty power as true God to drive the devil away or destroy him. He spoke a Bible verse, proclaimed God's truth that exposes and overcomes Satan's lies. Well, as he always does, Satan had another temptation all queued up, ready to go. He showed Jesus all of the kingdoms of the world all the buildings, the splendor, the wealth, the mighty armies. And he said, Jesus, I'll give you all of this if you just bow down before me, just one small act of worship. Now at first that sounds really unrealistic that that Jesus would even think about that. But the devil was making this seem as appealing as possible. Jesus did have a kingdom to establish. But the way for Jesus to do that involved being ridiculed and rejected and spit upon and beaten and left forsaken to die on a cross. And don't think that the devil hadn't whispered, Jesus, you can do all of that. And a lot of people aren't going to believe in you anyhow. And even the ones who do believe in you are often going to follow you with with lukewarm hearts. Here's a better way, Jesus. Take the easy way out. When you or I are facing a a long and difficult task, the temptation of an easy way out is very real. For example, the devil may say, look at all the others who who are making compromises and they're getting ahead. If you do it the honest way, you're going to lose out. Well, Jesus, when he was tempted that way, responded, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Jesus would not bow to Satan. He would worship and obey only his heavenly Father, who had sent him on that mission to seek and to save the lost. And that meant that Jesus placed you above his own personal comfort and safety. He placed your life ahead of his own as he went to the cross. Isn't that amazing, love? That Jesus would choose to do that for us. For us who have often been lukewarm in our lives of faith. For us who at times have bowed to Satan's offers of an easier way. There are things that God asks us to do that are not easy. For example, Jesus tells us that it is necessary that we forgive others from our hearts. But if someone tells a lie about us or is mean to us, we know how hard that can be. And so the devil will suggest, give them a taste of their own medicine. Make them pay for what they did for you. If you follow God's way, they're just going to think you're a pathetic coward. He promises that his way is going to work better. But instead, it only results in more regrets and more guilt and more tension. The good things that the devil promises never come to be. But notice again how Jesus overcame this temptation. He said, it is written, and spoke God's word. So the devil thought he would try that for the next temptation. He went on to quote a Bible verse. 
about God's promise to send his angels to protect his people in time of need. And he suggested that Jesus could follow a a very special way to show how God keeps that promise. Jesus could go to the highest point of the temple and he could jump down and let the angels protect him. God did make a promise that he would protect his people in times of need. And God certainly did that. For example, at the time of the prophet Daniel, when King Nebuchadnezzar put him in that den full of lions, God sent his angel and protected. But God was not saying, as Satan was suggesting, that we can just take all kinds of risks and just expect God to protect us. And so Jesus corrected him, saying, It is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Has Satan ever misquoted the Bible to tempt you? God forgives every sin, he can say, with the suggestion that that we, of course, are free to do whatever we want. He'll say, you can go ahead and sin just once. God will forgive you. Or he'll say, you can go ahead and sin just once more. He forgave you last time. He'll forgive you this time, too. Or he might suggest, that we don't have to be careful about what we view online because God won't let us fall from faith. But if we deliberately put ourselves outside of God's will, we put ourselves in danger, and so we need to be careful when Satan puts us to the test. Jesus alone overcame every temptation of Satan. But what exactly does that mean for you and for me as day by day we continue to struggle as Satan puts us to the test. There's three important truths for us to remember from this. The first one is that the devil is real. Don't underestimate the dangers of temptation. The devil never has your happiness in mind. He is, as Jesus says, a murderer from the beginning. He always is working to weaken faith, trying to get us to doubt or to despair or to have a false sense of security, always with his relentless goal of trying to destroy our faith. Realize the reality of that danger. Also remember a second truth. See the far greater power of Jesus. Jesus is the champion that we need. He never sinned. He overcame every single one of Satan's temptations. And now, Jesus credits his own righteousness, his perfect record against temptation. He credits that to you. By faith, you now have that perfect record in the eyes of God. Because every sin, every failure in time of temptation has been completely washed away removed from you forever because of Jesus' sacrifice. What amazing love that Jesus would live and serve and obey and even die to give us that. Rejoice that Jesus' victory over Satan means eternal victory for you. And remember a third truth also. Jesus gives you the powerful weapon to respond when Satan tempts you. It is the same one that he used, the sure and certain word of God. Our own strength is no match for Satan. And we will not perfectly overcome every temptation, but don't ever say, I'm only human, I can't stop myself from sinning, because that's forgetting something. Yes, we are only human, but we are also God's children. And Jesus has given to us his powerful word to speak whenever Satan tempts us. You have eternal worth and everything that is good in Christ your Savior. You have a promise that God will protect you and provide for you in every need. You don't need anything that Satan can offer you. 
There is nothing that he can give that can make your life happier or better. All of his offers are lies. Only God's word is truth. And the better you know God's word, the more quickly you will be able to spot the devil's lies. So get to know that word of God better and better. Read it and think about it and take it to heart and impress it upon your mind, even memorize parts of it so that you are able to quickly say, Satan, you are lying. You cannot offer me anything good. Only my God speaks the truth. And as you grow in God's word, then pray. Pray for God to guide you in every time of temptation and for him to keep you in Christ. In Jesus, find strength and victory. In each temptation, in Jesus, strength and victory. In each temptation, amen. And I invite you to stand. And the peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. And you may be seated for our Lenten confession. And I'm going to have to step out in the front so that I can see the screen. I'm sorry. We declare together this truth of our God. This is what the Bible teaches, and therefore what we believe. We believe in Jesus Christ. He is the true God from all eternity, almighty, all-knowing, present in all places. He is a man from Nazareth, weak in the flesh, fearful of future sorrow, tortured by pain. He was tempted like us, yet like we will never know. But he triumphed over temptation. He refrained from his full might and glory. He submitted humbly to the Father's will. He chose death to give us life. We believe that our sins anger God, each one of them, big and small, public and private, those that hurt others, those that don't appear to hurt anyone, those we don't even remember. We believe that Jesus lived and died for the sins of the world. He resisted every temptation. He reached out in love to anyone in need. He remained pure in every thought, not just to be a good person, not just to be a good example, but to be mankind's perfect savior and substitute to live the law in our place so that the law will not condemn us. He submitted to shame. He suffered unjust punishment. He sacrificed himself not to prove a point, not just to show us how to obey, but to take mankind's sentence for sin as our perfect savior and substitute. He is our sure hope and salvation. This is what the Bible says. Therefore, this is what 